Do you also visualize the solar system in 2D? I do. Here's the Sun, here's the Earth, then there are all the other planets, and it's one big disk. But this disk is actually not how space looks like. Space is actually infinite. It goes into all these directions. Of course, it's not really infinite. There is a border to our universe. And the question obviously is what is beyond the border of our universe. But that's not what I'm talking about. So yesterday, as so many nights in the last weeks, I lay up in bed again. And I lay awake up in bed. And I started to wonder just how paradoxical our, or at least my, not our, I'm basically only talking about me at this point in time. Our visual, <laughs> my visualization of the universe actually is. So first of all, we have the disk. And now, how weird is it? Uh, it's not so much how weird is it, it's just, I mean, just imagine. The, the normal things we, we have, if I take this here, and this would be the sun, for example. And I take the sun and place it into space. The natural assumption we have, because we live on Earth, is that it falls down. But obviously it doesn't. In space. So, what if, for example, I mean, just the fact that I am... I have trouble grasping the idea that gravity actually doesn't really exist in space. At, at least the effects of gravity, which we also used to on Earth, with everything basically falling towards the center of the Earth, not towards, of course, also towards the ground of the Earth, but only not really, because actually it falls towards the center, the gravitational center, at least. So the big thing, I think, one could potentially take away from this is the fact that the sun, what happened if the sun just fell into nothingness? And if it fell into nothingness, why wouldn't it, would it fall into into this direction, into the longitudinal direction, or would it fall basically into this direction? It could basically fall into any direction. And also what would happen if the sun actually fell into any direction? What would happen to the rest of the solar system? And as I started to wonder about this, I rea not I realized, but I just theorized based on what I know about physics is, first of all, we have the Earth, which is, of course, we could go even smaller than the Earth, but first of all, we have the Earth, and then we go smaller. The Earth is basically one gravitational center, and it is this gravitational center that holds all the things surrounding the Earth together, which is us, which is this mouse in front of me. This mouse couldn't really exist in space. Of course, it could exist in space, but <laughs> of course, this is much more applicable to actual organisms that evolved uh, with the constraint of gravity, us for example. So this mouse could potentially also exist, but it only exists because we exist, because nature itself probably didn't come up with a mouse, even though it came up with a mouse and it doesn't look like this. So <laughs> if we go smaller than the Earth, then we have something like atoms. And now when it comes to F, atoms again, we also have a similar structure again. The structure that something is in the middle and most of everything else is just empty. And then we have things surrounding this middle. And these things surrounding this middle are the electrons. And of course, we also have the protons and the neutrons in the core of the atom. And then we could go potentially even smaller, but we won't. So what if we go bigger than the Earth? So now there is the solar system. And what would now happen to the solar system if the sun just dissolved, or let's just say the sun just went up into the air, or down into the air, or down into empty space, or just, if the sun, wh why is the sun held in place? Why is the sun the center of our universe? Why do we even drift around the sun? I mean, these are all pot potential questions I couldn't just right from the start actually answer. And this is also something that actually quite buffers me bothers me about recording, for example, these videos. The fact that I constantly have to display my my knowledge, because I'm not recording these videos usually with like Wikipedia articles upon Wikipedia articles. And also, I think it makes more sense, at least in terms of these kind of videos, to have like a coherent narrative. 
So I basically constantly display how dumb I actually am. And this is something I am not really comfortable with because I you know, I think it's not somebody, something everyone, or this is something probably everyone is uncomfortable with. So now we take the sun and let's just say, um, let's just ask the question, why is the sun held in place? And so if we think about this, then first of all, we have the atoms and there are electrons, which obviously don't run around in circles, but in different things which are much harder to explain and also much harder to visualize. Let's just say it's a solar system, a very tiny solar system. And we have these things. So it's rotating around this other thing. And now all of these things make up us. So there are constantly electrons running around in us. There are also neutrinos that are currently running through us, which we don't register or realize. But if we then move to the bigger system of the Earth already, then we have the Earth. And the Earth also has something that runs around it. So we have the Earth in which atoms run around each other. Then on a solar level, level, we have now the moon that is running around the Earth. And then we have these two systems, these two systems, now just two fingers, which run around the sun again. And now the whole thing is basically made up by gravity. Gravity is the whole thing that holds all of these systems together. And what, why now the question, why don't they drift into these other directions? I actually saw something probably a few times already about why it is the case, but I just currently cannot remember why it is this direction and not the other direction. I think it has to do something which, with how particles actually then once gravity basically establishes itself as a force that pulls things together. So once, so from my understanding, it looks like this. There are particles in the universe, basically particles just. And then we have basically based on statistics, not really based on statistics, but much more based on coincidence, these particles just go around. And sometimes maybe potentially we have particles that are just locally more dense than the rest. And they are locally so dense that they, they establish a gravitational pull. And then within this gravitational pull, um, these disks are starting to revolve around this gravitational thing. And there seems to be some kind of reason why it goes into one direction. And now here's another question. In which direction actually can you just from the top of your head answer the direction in which the Earth revolves around the Sun? Is it this way or is it the other way? I can't and also haven't looked it up. Seemingly counterclockwise, at least according to a quick Google search. Of course, counterclockwise is only a perspective because who sets basically the frame? The frame it is, is set by us. Basically, we determined that there is a north and a south. And if we anchor this north and the south as up and down in space, then we have an up and down in space, even though space doesn't really have any directions. But of course, we need some kind of directions. We can also establish a three dimension coordinate system in space. But now, if we have this reference system and we also tilt it by a certain degree because the Earth is actually tilted and then this revolves around the Sun. Now, if the Sun just goes haywire and just goes into nothingness, what would actually happen? I guess the same thing that actually let's just take the Sun and the Sun then dissolves into nothingness. What would happen to these things? I think the same thing would happen and I'm not a physicist, but if you take a bucket of water and you then attach, so you have the bucket of water, it's like this, and then you attach a string to it. And then you spin around yourself. Then the water stays in the bucket. And this is actually called two things. The first one is what we have to understand is that things like to stay in the motion that they already were in. This is called the inertia law or also the law of inertia. And so now if we take the water bucket and this string actually rupts. As the string rupts or rupts, the water bucket just continues on the path it is on. So now if we take a look at this spinning thing in the middle I am with the string attached and the string rupts, then it just continues on the tangent line and goes off into space basically. If we now take the metaphor and apply it to our solar system. So basically the only thing that is holding us together, us, now, as a solar system, is the sun. And the only thing that is us holding us on the Earth 
is the earth itself. Is the earth just the soft under, underneath us? Where would we fall towards? Probably towards the sun. But if then the sun doesn't exist anymore, the question is, where would we fall towards? So basically, we can take this question of what would happen if the next bigger thing that actually creates the gravitational force that makes us potentially, usually, revolve around something. And by pursuing this path, we can actually see the gravitational forces in the, in the, in the universe, basically, and retract them, not retract them, but track them and go along this way and find basically new things to discover. So let's find new things to discover then. The next thing now is, so the soul, the Earth has, has already disappeared, basically. <laughs> of course, if you lived on the moon and the moon disappeared, that would, until this point in time at least, hold you onto the moon with one sixth of the Earth's gravitational force, then you would fall onto the Earth, I think at least. Probably because the moon is pretty big and also I don't really know if the gravitational force of the moon, not of, of, the, of the moon, but if you have the same distance as the moon to the earth, would you actually fall still to the earth or to the next bigger thing? You can actually calculate this very easily, but <laughs> I can't because, well, I'm just recording this right now and I don't want to make fancy calculations and I also don't want to get them wrong. But there is a formula which you can calculate basically the force that inter the gravitational force between two bodies. And so now I can actually also Google this for you. At what height would you not fall back to Earth? The lowest you could orbit around Earth without falling back to the, <laughs> to the ground is 160 kilometers. However, this doesn't mean that a body absolutely cannot orbit below this altitude. It's just that it would have to be constantly boosted by a rocket to prevent it from falling back down to Earth. So basically think of the bucket again. If I rotate smaller, not smaller, but slower with the bucket, the bucket actually goes down. Of course, now, in terms of the Earth, because the Earth is round and also a sphere, the bucket actually falls down to the Earth, basically constantly. And the string is actually the century, the century petal force we actually discussed. So we haven't fully discussed it yet. So the one thing that drives basically the thing to stay in this line around driving, that I am driving around myself if I'm rotating with the, with the bucket of water is inertia. But now the thing that actually holds it together, so that not, not the thing that holds it together, um, a centric petal force is basically the force that forces a body towards the, the inner circle, basically. So this now here is basically either you or it's the moon or it's the earth and this then here is the center. And now here we have the century petal force. There's actually the force that is holding the body towards the center, that's driving the body towards the center. So basically it's a balancing act between this body trying to leave here, which is, which is called through inertia or by inertia, and this force just pulling constantly this body inwards. And apparently at 160 kilometers, you would still be in that balance and a if you go beyond, basically, you would basically slowly increase your your distance from Earth, and then just like the rockets. So, for example, the recent Artemis mission is kind of also. So, I actually recently saw the trajectory of the Artemis mission, and it also then goes around the Earth, not around the Earth, but around the Moon, like one times, and then it actually only lands like this, which is basically using this system here. So now the question is. What happens? So, let's just assume we are human. We are a human that is landing on the moon. And similar now to maybe a movie like Moonfall, we discover that the moon is actually just um, gone. Or the moon doesn't necessarily need to be gone. The gravitational force of the moon just needs to be gone. Then we maybe fall towards Earth, but maybe also we don't, so we haven't fully answered this question. The question, the next best question we have I think is now, or the next thing we need to discuss is what would happen if the Earth then dissolves. Um, we would potentially still, <laughs> the, the question now is, because the Earth is also so big, it is also a gravitational force. So basically, it is not only 
the sun that is constantly pulling the earth, but it is also the earth that is pulling the sun, just to a much smaller degree. So therefore, if now the sun dissolves, all these, all these planets we have would just be in, in space. And they probably would move some more, and they will probably move some more very similar to this. So once the center is, is basically gone, they would just drive off into distance. And they would all drive off potentially into different directions, depending on where they are currently at in terms of them revolving around the sun. Because usually the planets are not aligned, even though that's usually how we display them in visuals. So therefore, they potentially would all drive into different distances, not distances, but directions. But I asked myself, what would then be the next big gravitational center? And that probably is the Milky Way. So we have, so there seems to be the theory that in the center of the Milky Way is actually a really big black hole. This was a theory for quite some time. And then in, on April 10th, 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration released the first horizon scale image of a black hole in the center of the galaxy Messier 87. Of course, this is not a black hole of our galaxy, but at least we now know the black holes really exist. Of course, we, we, <laughs> I do not, but the best scientists on this earth do. So basically, coming back to the beginning, we thought of the solar system, at least I thought of the solar system, whenever I visualized it in 2D, basically, as a disk. It is basically a giant disk. I mean, it's a really weird question to ask, but it's also a very reasonable question to ask. Why, for example, is not the sun here, and then we have Earth revolving around here, then something else revolving this way, and something else this way. Why do all align within the same two-dimensional sphere? And then also, why is the Milky Way again a disk? And so, therefore, the universe, at least to some degree, actually is two-dimensional, but only in these local, in these local confinements of either galaxy, galaxies are even bigger. And this also brings up the question, are all of the different things in the universe actually aligned in the same 2D space? I guess not, at least not from what I saw from images, different images from, the, from space. I mean, the most obvious answer is no. Why? Because as we look in the stars, there seems to be stars in every direction. And also, if we rotate on our Earth and see different stars, then these stars also seem to be in different directions. So therefore, I guess not. But the Milky Way, at least, seems to be also some kind of disk. So the question is, of course, we then have bigger groups, so galaxy groups, basically, which are called clusters of galaxies. Are these clusters of galaxies then revolving around something even bigger? Or is the revolving around something? So basically, where would we fall towards? To answer the final question, where would we fall to? If first the Earth dissolves, then the Sun dissolves, then maybe the potential hole, the black hole, in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way dissolves, where would we fall towards? And I think this is just such an interesting question, because it is on the intersection between our usual, our usual thinking that is largely based on our perception of the world, as everything falls in this world, but it just doesn't fall in space, it's just space. And if you put something in space, it would just stay there. It's just so weird, but it probably does. But it doesn't really, because there is always some kind of bigger gravitational energy that potentially pulls these particles. But not really also, because if you think of the galaxies, for example, these galaxies are galaxies. And if we have two galaxies, they don't just mesh into each other. Sometimes, so there is even a case, I think, where two galaxies are slowly, basically, overlapping. Which is also weird, because what happens then to these gravitational forces and are they kind of intersecting with each other? So, the main point maybe I want to drive away from this is, the, if you just ask and ask and ask, um, as I did, you just discover that you basically know nothing at all.